Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 37 of my Iron Man Age of Ultron inspired Hulkbuster suit. So obviously it's part 37, we've done quite a lot of stuff. Have a look back through the old videos. It's actually a costume that I can get into and walk around in, but for the last few parts I've had the body down and put it on the workbench here so I can work up on the helmet and other things. So last time I worked on smartphone control, we had a look at that using some photons from particle.io and we managed to turn the lights on and off in the eyes. There's also other features in here like a flip up faceplate that I still need to build some mechanics for. But I've actually got to exhibit this at DEF CON 4 in Southampton in the UK in October. Have a look at nerdageddon.co.uk. So I need to get this looking as finished as possible, at least from the front. So the plan for the next few episodes is to get more body panels on and actually get on with the appearance. The back of it's pretty much an empty um, sort of expanse of nothing. It doesn't really matter as long as it looks good in the photo shoot. So the priority is to work on basically panels for the shoulders, the rest of the helmet, um, the arms and the missing ones from the legs. So I'm going to actually start with the fingers which are down here. So let's have a closer look. And my t-shirt this week is of course a picture of the sky on an English summer's day. So here is one hand and this has been made with basically ABS printed parts and the red parts are Ninja Flex. So these joints flex and they're pulled by these nylon 3D printer filament cords which go to a block and tackle which is pulled by this motor and all of that is controlled by an Arduino and the joystick in the upper arm and some other electronics and that joystick controls the entire lower arm and also the shoulder weapons. But for now we're going to put some panels on the fingers. Obviously these have been made quite thin so they bend apart from these loops on the inside. So I'm going to put some wedges on the back of the fingers and then we're going to make some sheet material parts so we can build those and make them quite a bit thicker and then work our way up the back of the hand. Here they are, so I've made these wedges which are to go on the fingertips, although I was thinking about actually 3D printing the fingertips because it's going to be quite hard to make uh, the actual end of the finger with a round on out of sheet material, so I may well 3D print those. Um, and I've got these other parts which go just on the back of each digit and that allows me to wrap some sheet material round between the loop on the front and these on the back. And all of these are printed in ABS so I can solve and weld them on with acetone to the original pieces. I've printed some fingertip parts, here they are. They've come out quite nicely actually. And I've also got one of the wider ones printing for the middle finger as we speak. So now I've seen these, I quite like to print actually all of the sections and I think that's gonna be quite an easy way to make them uniform and have the same finish and so on. But let's see how those fit. Here we are down with the hands again, so that seems to fit on there quite nicely. Um, I can just imagine all of these of course being covered in 3D printed parts, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I've got plenty more parts made for the individual finger parts and those have been made in two halves which fit together back to back to make up one section. Of course there'll be two of those on most of the fingers and then the finger tip. So I need to clean these up a bit, get the uh, brims off. I'm going to stick those together with acetone to make a solvent weld. Um, and then we can smooth them out hopefully by dipping them in that acetone and then painting them up. Unfortunately my little wedges I made is slightly too big to fit. So um, I can't actually use those but these should stick well enough to the fingers as they are. So I'm just smoothing these off. I've given these a bit of a sand all over and I'm just dipping them in acetone. So I've got a box here which is polypropylene which is acetone safe. And I'm just going and submerging those, not too much so they don't take too long to dry out. 
like that, and then leaving them on this bit of foam, which turns out to be acetone safe. I can't dissolve it in acetone, so I basically sanded off some of the big lumps, and that's about it. So I haven't got rid of the build lines completely on these, but it helps enough just that I can paint them and they all look like a uniform finish. Here they are, they're not totally perfect, you can still see the seam lines and you can still see some build lines but basically compared to the entire visual impact of the suit they're going to be fine and I thought people would like to see me do more in this episode than sand everyone perfectly smooth and fill them and do nothing else other than make fingers. So let's get those stuck on. Just using hot glue to glue each of those finger sections to the loops underneath and they seem to be working out quite well, the spacing is okay. And I've just got a battery in, so if I grab the joystick, you should be able to see the hand opening and gripping again. It seems to become a bit permanently bent, so it doesn't actually um, spread backwards like it used to since it's been here for a couple of weeks. But I'm not really planning on gripping anything anyway, so as long as it can come back enough to reveal the repulsor which will light up eventually, then that's fine with me. I've got all my finger sections installed on both hands which are actually looking pretty good. I wish I'd used black nylon 3D printer filament for the pull cords now but there we go. I will eventually return and cover that with something flexible. But for now it looks alright, they look about the right scale for the whole thing. So I'm pretty happy with those and we now need to make some other sections to cover the arm or see the back of the hand. The palm has a place for the repulsor, but there will be another piece that covers that and just lets the repulsor shine through, which I still need to make. But for now I'm just going to get some more sheet material on, so we can try and get the visual impact for the suit. The rest of the panels on Hulkbuster are made from foam floor mats, and on top of that is stuck foam PVC board, which is a rigid foam board which you can shade with heat. That's the way I've done all of these sections, which has then been painted up so it gives them a bit of thickness. So I'm going to be doing exactly the same with the arms. I've already chopped the knobs off the edge of this floor mat. So here's a whole mat. Unfortunately this one's got a slight defect in but I don't think that'll matter by the time I've put the next layer on. Now with the arms what I need to do is leave a cavity in them so I can get to the mechanics. So I can still get to the electronics and the other bits and pieces. So I'm going to make several small sections which stick on and then the top layer will be uh, removable in some places. So I need to experiment with sticking these on, but it shouldn't be too tricky. Here's the first piece which is going to go on here. So I've got that hole there so I can get to the programming socket of the Arduino and I can get to the mechanics inside. Obviously this is a bit of an underlay so there's going to be another couple of layers on top of that probably. And I've also left this cut out here which will have something in it in the future. That just lets the arm shut fully so it hits the end switch. I'm making some parts for the hand backs which are just going to be sort of box sections and what I've done there is cut a sort of chamfer in the foam so that it can make an angle and I've put tape over the back here so that glue doesn't squirt through basically so I can go and put some glue in here and shut this and the blue tape will stop the glue squirting out of the outside of the seam. There we go, and that's a nice clean seam. So both of my arms are on there, and also the bits on the back of the hands. What I really need to do next is put the piece on here, so that instead of there being a gap between them, we actually need to close that gap and make this bit slightly bigger, so as it hinges back, this piece actually covers and overlaps the piece of the back there. And obviously this is made of the piece I just showed you with the tape, 
with another piece stuck on the back. So the effect we get there is a kind of curve as it comes down and then this whole piece lifts up and overlaps to reveal the weapon in the cuff here. Just making those extra cuff pieces, so I've actually bent this foam so it's curved in two directions by heating it and squashing it over my knees and then I've cut again chamfers and attached these sides on and I've used again the blue tape method sort of by going along a little bit at a time, putting the glue in the seam and sticking tape on the outside and bending it back so we get that nice clean seam line on all the pieces pretty much. Here they are all stuck together so we've got two sides on it and a kind of curve all over and curves on these side pieces to make kind of banana shapes and I've just got the last one here with the tape on just gluing up. So I've installed those onto both cuffs and I've got quite a nice motion out of it. Quite happy with that. And quite happy with the contour there, even though this is flat, the bottom of that being curved sets it off nicely. So obviously we'll have a weapon that's revealed under here, it may also pop out slightly itself. And now I can start to plan some more parts that go around the hand, a cover for this, and we can put some rigid sections on and then some 3D printed greeblies on top of that. So a quick demo of it being activated by the electronics with one single press on the joystick. And obviously the weapon will fire in between opening and closing. I've made a cover for this, which is another piece of foam which I've just bent with heat, and I've also got another layer to it which is made of foam PVC board which fits over it exactly like that. So that makes a stepped part, and this piece is going to be detailed up by scoring it to make some lines, and then I'm going to stick some 3D printed things on, and I'm going to do the same for the rest of the forearm. So here are the pieces that are gold on the hand plate on the back of the forearm. Now I've had to make some of them in thinner material, so this is one and a half mil styrene, which is why I haven't scored any details in, and that's so this can still fold back onto it without any obstructions. Now I've got this piece which goes over the hand cover there, so that needs to be attached with something and I need to make some other panels to go around it. Here are the sections on the other arm and what I've begun to do is make these foil uh, templates and we can squash foil to the shape of the contour so we can map out where the next pieces need to be made and I've just tacked this piece on with glue at the moment so I can make the pieces that fit around it and we can also shape up the back of the hand plate.
Here are some more foil templates which I've just pinned on all over so you can see I've got lines in between them so they're a bit broken up like some of the panels on the rest of the body that I've done. All of these are going to be red so they need to be traced onto foam PVC board shaped up with heat and stuck on and of course I need to make opposites of those to go on the other arm. Here's my foil template for one piece and these are my two bits of foam PVC for each arm. So I'm just going to shape that up with a hot air gun so it matches the contour and obviously paint them up and get them stuck on. So I've got quite a few pieces to do and I'm not going to make a video of every piece because it's probably going to get quite boring watching me squirting hot air on things and painting them. Here they are, so I've got all those pieces stuck on. And I've also stuck them of course onto the other arm which is over here. And I've also installed hand backs which actually aren't held on with anything at the moment. They're just clipped in and that's just a curved piece that wraps all the way around the hand and it's got foam on the other side. It's a slightly different shape on one end so that it comes round and allows the thumb to move. And that just fits in there. It will be fixed in properly at some point. But for now it's just propped in so we can see roughly what it looks like which I think is pretty good. I think it's quite good in terms of its contour. Now obviously all these parts are going to get weathered up the same as the rest of the suit which will hide those defects. So obviously I've got gaps of the same style in the arms and the edges are fairly dodgy on all the pieces and most of it is hidden with um, various paints which I've done in previous episodes but I'm not going to do right now. So next time I'm going to come back and make some more pieces and then we'll weather it all up at once. But for now I'm pretty happy with the style of those forearms. As well as painting, the other thing that needs to be done of course is the repulsors in the hands which I'll be coming back to detail up at a later stage. So as I said I need to exhibit this at an event in October. So the basic plan for this episode and the next few is to try and get more and more panels on so it looks great in the photos and after that we'll come back and do the detail and the back which is completely empty at the moment. It's the front that really matters though. But that's all for now. Check back in two weeks for the next episode. It's going to be every two weeks from now on and it has been for some time. Next week will probably be an update on my alien suit. So that one is nearing completion and then there'll be some news on some new projects. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out my social media links in the description of this video.